Uh, oh, recording. Yeah, Ooh, Leslie's recording now. And it also says your host, so that works. Nice. Let's start. Yes. Okay, I can see your screen. So let's first see what this look like. We. This is the goal is to create a uh, browser game, but. This thing can only run, it can also run desktop. So if you can see, this is the desktop window. Mm -hmm. And it's just an OpenGL triangle, basically. And for the browser side, what can I do? So I, I can have an HTTP server and it's like that. Wait a minute, but the hold on, the screen hasn't changed. Oh, I see. <laughs> I was confused. Oh, sorry, sorry. I think I cannot share the ID. I should share like the whole desktop. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That would probably be better. Can you see my browser? Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's nice. So this is the browser side. This is the desktop side. The idea, the idea of this project is just don't write any client browser side code, basically you just Right, almost everything in C++ and then it can run on desktop, can run on browser, can run on mobile, whatever. And so, so the desktop side and the browser side do need a little bit of differences. So this is the main, this is the main, like main function in the uh, desktop side, where we have this app class, and where, then we just have this loop until we hit this close button. Uh, the, this update, the meaning of this update is we run this main we run this main loop, and in every iteration we run this update function. Can you understand that? Mm -hmm. And then we have two two like times. One is now, one is previous. And the the idea is from now and from previous we can get the delta time of the current frame. So from there we can get the like stuff like frame rate. Because if we want to update the game, we need to know how many times have passed since the last time. Otherwise just consider if you have a bullet and if your computer for some reason run faster, this frame it will like fly a bit further and Next frame, it's your computer runs a bit slower, and then your bullet will also just run a bit slower. That's not how things work, so we need this kind of delta time. Can you understand that? Yeah. Yep. Oh, hope Evan's here. Yeah. Hey, how's, how's it going? Guys? How's it going? Good, 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 good. Just chilling with uh, Jessica right now. We are social distancing, and uh, it's a cool little live code. <laughs> they say, why, why do they call my lifestyle social distancing <laughs> <laughs> it's like the wait where you guys are getting paid meme it's like that meme <laughs> totally like I am, i'm just doing my normal life almost <laughs> pretty so, much like no no work no school mostly problems. just working on uh on the source code for his job right now yeah. well for for cs it's really easy just to be like okay we're going online now everyone's like okay sure whatever yeah. right but like for everybody else it kind of sucks dude right yeah yeah 
So let's continue. For, so this, this kind of main loop is for the desktop side only. For the web, for the website, we have, we need to hook it, hooks our main loop into the browser loop. So this em script and set main loop function is basically like hooks the browser loop say like in every iteration, in, in every iteration we will do this function. And this function actually will just call this function. The whole reason I need to get this complicated is so this, this, so this function expects a function pointer. So I can pass this in, but this loop is a closure that contains data. So because this loop is a closure that captures, captures those three variables in. That's why, that's why I need to have uh, like this kind of main loop called loop. And mm. inside loop is same kind of business. We just like get the now and then, then update. We're in the update function, it's just, we calculate the delta time and then update the previous time. So that's captured by reference, right? With the ampersand? Yeah. That's is that dangerous or no? What? I don't know. I'd, I haven't really done it much, but what? Like, is it like it was like capture by reference and capture by copy? Which one is like? I heard one of them was like dangerous. Yeah, capture by re reference dangerous, but in here it's okay because the lifetime of this thing, lifetime of this thing is well, well actually, lifetime of this thing is longer, is longer than those three variables it captures. So kind of dangerous sure but in practice in practice because we just run this main loop so but is is main loop like it's a is that running on the same thread as when you initialize loop i don't know if like how m scripting works at all um, so it's a it's a browser loop basically so oh so all this is in the same loop so even your int main is as well well int main is not int main is the uh, like it's run once basically, like it's a starting code of the web assembly. Oh, but it's in the same thread as your main loop. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so the, oh, so those yeah, other references. Web assembly don't support any like threading basically. Just like that's JavaScript. Okay. Nice. If you want to do you asynchronous code, then it will become tricky because I probably need to, to use some new scripting API. I don't know, that's probably something we can experiment later. Yeah, I was just trying to get up to speed with it, cool. Yeah, especially how to make asynchronous code work both on desktop and on this. That would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking pain, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, so let you see my desktop version, it's, it's the same. And the ver web version is like this. The nice thing, nice thing about in scripting is like the only thing difference between the two builds in the co the code base is those two files, which is quite minimum, and all the other code are shared. And now let's look at this app. I know I shouldn't have this God class where it contains everything, but it's just for my convenience. So in our main function, whatever version, we first call the constructor and then we do this update. So those two are the important part of this app class. Inside, inside app class in the constructor, Well, this is just start about we cannot have we cannot have two set of the uh, app class but it can only have one and I don't like singleton because I don't like static storage versions that's why I use just this kind of card uh, yeah and 
and also we just initialize a bunch of stuff. SDL is, uh, I think it's, I, I forget what it's called. Yeah, simple direct media layer. So that's the library we use to have window support, keep keyboard mouse, and audio support, and it also also contains a two D graphics library on top of OpenGL, but we will not use that. Instead, we will just use OpenGL directly. So another question: If there's if you're using SDL, does SDL have to have bindings for mscript in or for WebGL, or does it get translated? Mscript and shipped a hacked version of SDL, basically. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's shipped with the compiler. That's basically how to do those kind of those kind of graphic stuff in Mscript, and maybe there are other ways, but. That's the way I find like in tutorials. Yes. And yeah, let's maybe let's spend some time to talk about what dependencies we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so this file is my current dependencies. This is like formatting library just like printf, the type C version of it, and also nicer syntax. This, this, this is just some helper utilities. EMTT is a really good uh, entity component system libraries. We will not talk about ECS today, but later we will talk about it. We don't need DRM anymore. We just delete that because I'm using my own math library. Yeah, I'm that guy that's write my own lab math library. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and SPD log, this is for logging. In GUI, this is for immediate mode GUI, so it's just like quick debugging GUI and SDL. This is for desktop because uh, the script, which is the web, web assembly compiler ship SDL in the compiler. We also have this for tests, even though my game currently don't have any tests because you cannot test those kind of stuff yet. But later if I am coding something and it's testable, then I will definitely do tests. And yeah. So let's go back to here. We initialize SDL. We initialize a bunch of OpenGL stuff. We create a window. We create an OpenGL context. And initialize those imagery stuff, even though I'm not using it yet. Then in here, in here is the like the actual like non-initialization stuff. So in here, I'm saying I'm loading these two shooters, triangle vert GISL and triangle frag GISL, which is vertex shooter and fragment shooter. Uh, they are they are really easy shooters now. Yeah. Nothing to like look carefully here. This shooter builder is like a class I built myself to kind of save some OpenGL bottle plate, basically. And then, then we create a, create this vertex buffer that have have the data of this triangle, like those three positions. And the, and then we describe what those data is. We say it's the positioning of the triangle. That's the whole thing, basically. And this structure just like clear all the stuff up. 
for our update function, we first handle input, we could basically, if we click escape or click quit, click quit, which is either like keyboard escape key or like this key, then we close the window. Then this render scene is most where most stuff happens where we have this background color and we change our vertex buffer a little bit, then we draw stuff. Because our, I think this is better because our, uh, like our geometry actually change, even though later it would no longer change. I think that's an important part. Do you guys need, uh, want to go through those utility functions or like, let's just start doing stuff? We could just start doing stuff. Yeah, let's just start doing stuff. Cool. Yeah, it's, the utilities are basically like, like this class and like loading files, stuff like that. That's important. Okay, so for, for our 2D games, for our 2D games, we want to draw some chords on the screen. And then if we like have some texture on the chords, that's basically our sprite, right? So, if we have a texture coordinate and then just put the texture on top of this chord, then we get a sprite. And if we don't want the chord, we, we can have some transformations make this thing a rectangle. So the next step of us is to make the triangle a chord. Oops. Currently, we have this triangle. I think we don't need the axis. Uh, we can do zero, 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 zero. Uh, I, think, I don't know. I need something to draw to say, like, what is counterclockwise. Are you sure, like both this and whiteboard? Can you, can you say like both? No. I think you can only have one screen shared at the time for Zoom. Okay, okay. That's lame. <laughs> Not everything's Discord screen sharing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe next time we should use Discord. That could work. No, you should stream on Twitch. Yeah, but then we cannot have like live chat. That's why I, I said before I want to like live stream on YouTube, but then it's the same thing. Like we don't cannot have chat. This is not an open geo coordinate. Zoom is nice and cozy. Yeah. 
and this is counterclockwise zero zero one zero zero one. Wait, I cannot like close this. Sorry, I probably should not use that right whiteboard. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. That's that's a triangle. Let's first try what this will look like. Yeah, looks right. Let's reduce this shit. Yeah, 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 I'm your swearable. I know, I know. Yeah, it looks right. Since this quote geometry doesn't change at all, we can make it static. I, I don't like I don't like this format. Yeah. And what should be the other part of triangle look like? Uh, is it one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. I hope the orientation is right because I haven't been able to face calling yet. So it may be wrong, but if it's wrong, I can fix it later. What? Uh, we need to do something with this. So. Nice. So now we have a quad, but it's like absolute coordinates from zero to one. And we want to like make it in like the position we want it to be. Oh, wait. Why does it even work? Because I'm using like two coordinates, not three. I don't even understand why this works now. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, I changed it to two here. Yeah, I see. So, where is it's four. I don't know what this will happen, but I think that's right. Yeah, that's actually right. My previous shooter is just wrong. Now, let's add a projection matrix to the whole thing. Where is our shader? Shader, shader is here. So I need to include my own little math library. It's actually like a utility library for my game engine, but like not all the parts are ready yet, but the mass part uh, I'm pretty confident about. So what's our dimensions? That's a good time to make those things constant for now. Later, we can probably add functionality to like resize the window. And when we resize the window, this projection matrix also need to change. It's something it's like left, right, bottom, top, near, and far. Yeah. Now it's just this on this variable warning. We can bind this to a uniform. Wait, what? Oh, I think I make this function should belong to shader program, not not the not the shooter. I made a mistake of put it here when I called this. What? No, I think I changed the thing. I shouldn't change. Oh, 
you guys are alive? Yeah, I'm alive. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm waiting Very for you to alive. finish so I can ask you another question, that's all. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think this is good. So this is just a <clears throat> variable warning and now now we can actually just like so first is main, second is parameter. Let's basically we set this pro projection matrix in the shader so we can use it. And in here, Uh oh <laughs> yeah because also i didn't set up open gl debugging yet let's see what the web version says because in the web version that gel will have some debugging feedback i haven't set up for the desktop yet So for some reason I cannot compile my fragment shader. Uh, what to do? Oh. I already built to this. Maybe. What? Oh, I cannot modify this at all. Okay. Now yeah, let's Let's put it here, yeah. Not the ultimate solution because if we want to do any lighting, then the projection matrix sh should be calculated inside the fragment shader. Let's we can ignore that for now. Why? Because I'm using two old version. Uh oh, <laughs> sorry. I, I should set up this debugging stuff. I didn't see anything wrong here. Huh, that's so weird. It should be working, I think. Yeah. Is this a syntax error or? 
No, it's just his projection. In here, we said, oh, <laughs> no, this is right. Well, you should use this program again, or just shouldn't. Yeah. This should be right. Or maybe it's because our triangle becomes so small, so we can no longer see it anymore. Let's try to make it bigger. Yeah, yeah, because we have we have this like 1200 times 800, but our triangle was like, our, no, our quad was one by one. And that's why we cannot see it. It's actually working. Any questions so far? Hey, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a question related to the square or the triangle or anything that was happening. I was just asking like, when you, um, did this for because you said you got it to work for mobile devices too right yeah how uh how hard was that because i'm thinking about making something in the summer with someone but i'm not sure how to best approach that yet <laughs> I, I have no idea to be honest <laughs> just assume em script works quite well with mobile also sdl works with mobile so okay weird uh, if, if it doesn't it's easy to hook something else up and that will not be a big problem that's also the reason why using OpenGL it's like everywhere mm -hmm. even though apple may deprecate it soon the apple is already deprecated but apple may not support it in some device in the future well everything you do has to be for apple if you're using apple products so <laughs> yeah yeah, whatever. I don't want to learn metal. Also, I metal definitely, definitely don't work for web. I want to use web GPU, but it's still like not ready yet. Oh, Apple. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah, if I just hope this the whole status can become a little bit better. It's currently it's it's what it is. Let's change this in back. And we can add another add another uniform to this. Let's call it model. So the model is the transformation of our code. Now our code return to one by one, we can no longer see it. So we need some way to, some way to like transform it bigger. And do we need to pull this sugar program outside? Yeah, I will refactor this later. It, it will not be look like this, like this mess.
And in here we can we can set the uniform hue. I probably should add some implicit conversion of int vector to float vector to make it more convenient, but I don't know. I don't like this idea. What? We have our model matrix now. Now that's a that's a bad thing without any debugging is you never know what's going wrong. works yeah hey there it is yeah well it's that means my transformation is for some reason is not right do they have any like graphics classes at csc or uh, cu yeah but it's garbage don't take it <laughs> Blackies is the man, though. <laughs> so, pretty much what they teach at CU, according to Leslie, is really, really deprecated stuff. Oh no! Until <laughs> one, so it's like, no, it's definitely before I was born, and I'm quite old. Wow, I need to get better at these graphics stuff because this is like so far above my head. I feel like it gets easier if you just do it more, but I've never really done it, so. <laughs> no, uh, well, this 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 like this game is not focused on graphics. Basically, we once we have a uh, like sprite rendering down, then it's mainly just a two D game. I yeah. use OpenGL instead of like two D graphics library because I want to maybe later I will do some lighting stuff, make it looks cooler. Oh, that's so cool that you're making this cool app. I mean, also one of the good things for learning is tutorials like this. So, and you know, it's motivation for just having more tutorials is, but. Yeah. Oh, totally. So, but after I transform it's gone. Do I need to translate it to center or something? Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, oh, I shouldn't touch the axis. That's also a thing. Maybe I do need to translate.
That's sad. Is like this. So I'm confused about the coordinate system. It shouldn't. No, this is wrong. What's what's wrong here? Maybe our projection matrix is wrong. We need to do it like this. No. <sighs> well, I guess we will fix this next time. So I went and found a snowman to help you. It's a very supportive <laughs> snowman. Oh, it's in the chat. <laughs> It's a nice snowman, isn't it? Even though it's March, yes, we have a nice snowman. Do we not have Unicode for chat stuff? Or... No idea. I don't expect Zoom to have any sort of like uh, real functionality. Yeah, I mean, it does have stuff. Like if you look at the, well, um, if you can enable, you can enable uh, emojis for the participants list. You could, well, you have to enable emojis for participants. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's in the settings under like if you go to like if you go to the uh, boomers confirm you boomer dot um, zoom dot com. Can and I say anything? You, um, no, no. <laughs> Just nothing. No, well, no, no. We can see those. Those are characters. Yeah, we have the characters, but yeah, it's about Unicode somehow. Yeah. Huh. Wait. So if I do like this, that only shows up as lad. Okay. Yeah. So are you trying you... to make a better snowman than me? That's a smiley face. <laughs> oh, that's a challenge to my snowman. Oh, abilities. oh no. Okay. You know, now I have to find an ASCII snowman. <laughs> <laughs> no. ASCII snowman. Okay, let's let's see what I got. Uh, oh yeah, ASCII art. That <laughs> I remember. You. Okay, okay, okay. Um. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, okay. We'll use. Uh. We'll use this one. Yeah. Just realizing how different the uh, Zoom map for Windows is compared to the Zoom map for Linux. That's sort. There's your ASCII snowman. <laughs> Free snow. I guess we will fix the transformation matrix matrices next time. Yeah. So, out of speaking of transformation matrices, is there any reason that you'd use them over quaternion um, conjugation for doing rotations? No reasons, but I want to do translation and scaling, right? Okay. Also, it's easier because GRSL don't understand quaternions. But quaternions, you don't have any of the weird stuff going on at points when you're rotating too straight up. No, gable logs happen for everything, basically. And rotational matrix and matrices are quite good. It's, it, it's like the bad thing about it is the like the space it costs is bigger. It's still, 
all, all of them have the same problem, but all of the, uh, both rotational matrix, matrices and the quaternions are better than all the angles in that, in that sense. So if you don't use all the angles, you are fine. Yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> I think. So next next time we will, we will um, fix this. So actually makes this rotational matrix work so we can like move our code around on the screen. And also the next thing to do is kind of add some texture to this code. After that, we basically have a sprite that is on the screen, basically. Cool. Yeah, thank you. All awesome. All right. Nice work. Yeah, this is really fun. Have a great break, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Try not Have to uh, die. <laughs>